very much like a part of like the athletic culture in a lot of ways. But it's it's I guess that it really depends on your goals, right? Like in mm-hmm. some respects and kind of what you're working on, right, Chad? Yeah, what you're what you're aiming to achieve with that particular workout, what the type of workout is, you know, how detrimental or how destructive it is in terms of muscle tissue, how depleting mm-hmm. it is in terms of uh, energy stores, because you know if you run out of carbohydrate, your body starts to metabolize muscle tissue. So um, it, it's it's certainly a concern. It certainly uh, has merit, <clears throat> whether or not you're concern specific or whether or not you're uh, in taking protein shakes or you're just doing a recovery shake, again, that's going to depend on, on what you're looking to do. We've talked about how multi-sport athletes may work out a couple times in a day. So if they do a depleting workout and they're not going to have a lot of gas in the tank for a subsequent mm-hmm. workout. So yeah, a recovery shake becomes a really big deal there. Not necessarily a protein shake, but certainly. What do you mean the difference between those two, between protein and recovery shake? Uh, so, so protein, the emphasis is on, you know, protein. protein yeah. yeah. And a recovery shake is more intent on replenishing glycogen stores so that yeah. you have endurance later on. So that's mm-hmm. more sugar. Yeah. Than protein. Yeah. Carbohydrate. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Um, So there are a lot of different scenarios in in which protein becomes pretty important. Um, If the workout's a hard one, like a high intensity training workout, strength workout for sure. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, Even just like a long depleting workout, again, where you might start to metabolize uh, lean mass, a protein shake is shake is absolutely a good idea. Mm. Um, I do know that when people target weight loss, one of the things they that falls through the cracks is their protein intake. They're just concerned with eating less, and they don't really look at the composition of how much less they're eating. And then the focus really is, I need to eat enough to get through my endurance workout. So there's a too heavy emphasis on carbohydrate. Mm. Maybe not too heavy, but it's a not enough of an emphasis on protein. So protein intake becomes a really big concern. And if you're looking for weight loss, make sure you're not neglecting your protein, especially if you're training loads high. And especially if you're an aging athlete, Mm -hmm. you know, masters athletes, we have higher protein requirements. It's just the way it is. I mean, then anything that, that, um, causes an uptick in cortisol release. So long workouts, hard workouts, strength training, all these things, protein, especially if you're, you're bypassing the carbohydrate, which, you know, know, carbohydrate spurs insulin, insulin actually shuts down the cortisol, activity but if you're avoiding carbohydrates you got to get something in there and protein's an excellent fix Hmm. um so strength training especially and you mentioned you do that once a week with strength training especially i I don't know how old you are chris but especially if you're an aging athlete i'm talking protein before the workout during the workout after the workout and and again it depends on how strenuous your workouts are i mean you're just going in there and kind of pushing around some weight machines with (laughs) doing 25 reps each it's not going to have take the same toll as doing high strength work heavy strength work how much um, protein are we talking about? It, with with really active athletes, we can push it up. I mean, the, I think the typical RDA, FDA, whatever recommendation is like 1 to 1.2 grams of carbohydrate per kilogram of body weight Got yeah. it. per day. Okay. With endurance athletes, strength athletes, athletes who are putting a lot of the physical demands on their bodies, that can push up as high as 2, 2.5 grams per day. Wow. So we're talking doubling it quite mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. When you think about it too, though, it's – so if you think about someone who's doing a 2,000-calorie workout – Right, and their basal metabolic rate is two thousand. Mm-hmm. You're literally burning twice as many calories, so yeah. it makes sense. I need twice as much protein. Yeah, and if you're doing any muscle damage in the process or you know protein degradation, you got to make up for it somewhere, and it, it's got to come from protein. It doesn't right. come from carbohydrate and fat. And and just to add to that, more commonly than not, I see people not fueling their workouts and their rides sufficiently. You know what I mean? It's pretty rare to see a it's person all too common. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So as a result, you know, when you're looking at this, it isn't just like, you know, what you're depleting, but like you said, just hammering mm-hmm. home on that point of, of the damage that you could have done because you didn't fuel properly. Yep. It's very common. But for s- cycling, you don't fuel with 2.5 grams of protein. Probably not. Not yeah. unless you're Ironman triathlete and you're doing really long depleting workouts. Right. right. So you might have some protein, but you still need carbs. Oh, of course. Yeah. Totally yeah. Carbohydrate is still a necessary yeah. component. I just yeah. don't want people to neglect the exactly. fact that protein yeah. I, is. Spotted. And I don't want to make sure people think like, oh, sweet. I'm going to fuel with just protein. Protein. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely not yes. what I'm saying. Get Let's, a big tub. Yeah. Just put it in. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But what, yeah, that brings us to, let's talk about the types of protein too. Mm. This is an opportunity to just draw differentiations between. Mm. Um, so whey and ca- casein are both um, milk proteins, right? Whey, and they, 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 they're always talking about which, which um, to take when. Um, if you're going to, a whole milk protein includes both, but if you're going to break them down, use whey powder and then casein powder, whatever, um, whey is the one that's the most readily absorbable. So that would be the one that you get into your system Mm post-workout, maybe even pre-workout. In any case, that's the one that gets in there quickly. Whereas casein metabolizes much more slowly and that supports the ongoing synthesis, protein synthesis that takes place post-workout and perhaps during sleep. We'll get Mm -hmm. to that in a minute too. Um, between whey and casein, the, the, 
essential amino acid profile is so similar. So they're basically interchangeable in that respect. It really comes down to their rate of absorption. Um, and then they both contain the branch chain amino acid um, leucine. High in both those, and that's a that's a key BCAA. Got it. Um, so, like I, I covered the rate of entrance, and then if you are, however, lactose intolerant, um, I'm not sure what other alternatives. I'm sure there are other plant based ones, well, but soy is a go to. There is great whey protein that is uh, lactose free. Oh, fantastic. as a lactose sufferer, uh, yeah. I like the uh, on gold standard. I believe for yeah. whey. Yeah, that's a that's, that's the a stuff one. I have at home. Yep, and, and it, it is you don't you also are lactose intolerant, right? Yep. Do you have any problems with it? Um, nope, don't have any. Uh, the one one that I love after rides because it's genuinely just tastes like a very rich, delicious chocolate shake mm -hmm. is the Scratch Lab stuff. And before it caused a lot of problems for me, but now they have it with um, lactose -free. lactase yeah. ah, added in nice. to yeah. it. So as a result, it counteracts. So you have the enzyme that actually helps you break down the lactose. Exactly. So and that one too has like the four to one ratio between. Uh, carbs, carbs and protein. And protein. And okay. Whey protein. And I swear it's just like an it's like a delicious chocolate shake. It tastes shake. really good. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then um, just back, I mentioned soy. Uh, it isn't as bioavailable. The protein in it isn't as bioavail bioavailable as it is with milk protein, but it has all the essential amino acids. So it's still there. It might not be the best source, but you know, if you're vegan, vegetarian, whatever, it's it's one of your few sources. Um, so this, what else? I guess it kind of this this seems more. I shouldn't say more important, but but it, 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 I guess that the the crucial nature of this increases as your age increases, right? Yeah, le, and, and let me get to that. Let me say one more thing. Um, the yeah, yeah. Uh, there is a score. It's called the digestible indispensable amino acid score, and it looks at the rate limiting uh, amino acid and, and 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 basically scores it. And the uh, I think. Complete milk protein has one of the highest indispensable mm. AA scores. And basically, I think this is an argument in favor of chocolate milk. This is why chocolate milk does so well. Not Got to it. mention, it also has a fair amount of sugar and, and starts to replenish those glycogen stores too. Yeah. Mm. Not to mention, it's also got you know, other things like sodium, magnesium, calcium, um, all, all those other things that we'd like to replenish immediately post-workout if possible. Yeah. Yogurt is also a super good resource. Yeah, and if I can source. throw in another vote for chocolate milk, a great thing about that is that it's generally more available because you can it's go to a gas get. station yep. or something like that or a convenience store or a grocery store and you can get it. And I've had plenty of times where, you know, you'd, you can get like a blender bottle with your protein shake and then you can hopefully it has a compartment for powder or something, but mm -hmm. it's a bit more of an operation. So it is really nice if you have the flexibility to be able to take in, you know, I, I don't with that. Yeah. I guess I could take lactase pills and take those in, um, as I, as I drink, but it's, uh, it's, I think that like, uh, I guess, what do they say that, and this saying's applied to a lot of things, but they say the best something is the one that you have available or on you, yeah. you know, like uh, I know soldiers always talk the best about camera like, is the one you have. Yeah, yeah. The best, the best gun is the one that's on your mm -hmm. side. Right. Yeah. That's always there. So at weapon. The, yeah. Yeah. The best weapon. There we go. Um, you can recover effectively on McDonald's food. Wouldn't recommend <laughs> doing it all the time, but if it's your only option. Yeah. Right. So like, that's the important thing is if you set up this advanced and like very, like I, I know some people that have designed their own recovery drinks and it's a whole process and it's kind of complex. That's great. As long as you can control those circumstances, but as soon mm -hmm. as circumstances change, it can be tough to replicate that. So I'm going to try to summarize what we just said in recommendations. And if I miss, if I misrepresent Chad, please correct me. Do you want to cover masters athletes first or do you want to wait till I would time? love for you to cut. Okay. Cover so, so again, first. aging athletes, we have a higher protein requirement. So whereas, you know, you may get away with 20, 25 grams per day, depending on your body size, of course, as a mm -hmm. younger athlete, when we get older, that, that almost doubles. Um, the the 1.2 grams per kilogram recommendation ticks upward <coughs> toward something more like two wow. grams per kg. Wow. So it's quite a lot. Um, to break that down in a different way, it's about 0.4 grams per kilogram of weight four to five times a day. And that brings up another interesting point where, you know, protein is only so digestible or absorbable. You can only absorb so much of it at once. So you can't get it all in one sitting and expect yeah. to have the same effect as if you distribute those into that intake over the course of the day, four to five time, four to five different feedings. Mm, yeah. That's what happens is you get, uh, the rotten egg gas. Yeah. If you, for those who have gone, I've gone pro, full bro gym, lifting weights, and lots of protein, protein. Yeah. yeah protein. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's your body is not absorbing it and you get this awful, awful, yeah, yeah it's just like smell. anything else. It can only really. absorb so much, and it's yeah. got to pack it away or ditch it. Yeah. Ditch it somehow. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then uh, with masters athletes, but certainly you know, any type of athlete, the the pre bed 
intake of, and they typically recommend casing for this because it's slow release, yeah. is an extra 20 to 40 grams or just another one of those servings done just prior to bed. And there's there's you know, obviously the protein synthesis benefits of it. So you're improving your, your uh, protein, uh, not your turnover. Mm. Um, but it can also decrease sleep, sleep latency, sure. much like a couple doses of uh, tart cherry juice can do. So it, you fall asleep a little more easily. Tart cherry juice. I've been doing tart cherry juice as part of my recovery. Nate, you should make a tart cherry juice protein drink. You should do that. I know. Well, yeah. You're very on you brand. Could. You just, just <laughs> dump it in your chocolate milk. <laughs> um, uh, so let's recap. Go ahead. Can I, can I do it? Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you're a triathlete doing multiple workouts per day, absolutely do a recovery drink. Mm-hmm. With you, carbohydrate and, and protein. protein. If you are a master's athlete um, and you're doing longer gen- strenuous workouts, absolutely have uh, recovery plus with some extra protein. Mm-hmm. Because at, as you get older, we're going to worry about just extra protein in general. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are doing just super long, let's say like a six-hour totally depletion workout of any age, yeah, a recovery drink with protein, even if you're fueling all the while, yep, yep. is beneficial. Mm-hmm. If you are in your 20s to 30s, doing one workout, maybe the next day is recovery day, and then the next workout is not really necessary, but it could, you're not doing harm on it either. Um, experiment, if, it, if you feel like you recover better, do it, but it's not, like your glycogen stores over the next day will come back, and you're probably not mm-hmm. doing harm. If you're weightlifting, absolutely do, or weight training, mm-hmm. absolutely do a uh, recovery drink or a protein drink yeah. afterwards. Yeah. So did I get so it? It sounds pretty good. Yep. Yes. Way to go, Nate. I pay attention. A plus. <laughs>